Opposition leader Levan Mika claimed that Aslan Bazania, the president of Georgia's Russian-backed separatist region of Abkhazia, has fled to a Russian military base. Mika said negotiations between the government and demonstrators have ceased, and he vowed to initiate Aslan Bazania's impeachment through the Abkhazian parliament if he doesn't make contact before Monday. Spokespeople for Bazania insist that he's merely visiting his native town of Tamishi. A proposed investment agreement with Russia has provoked public outrage in Abkhazia. Opponents argue that the deal would unfairly favor Russians' business interests. Amid intense protests against the authorities pursuing the agreement, opposition spokespeople have stressed that the demonstrations are not directed at Abkhazia's relationship with Moscow itself. Russia recognized Abkhazia and another breakaway region, South Ossetia, as independent states in 2008 after it defeated Georgia in a five-day war. It maintains troop bases in both regions and props up their economies. In Abkhazia's capital, Sukhumi, protesters used a truck to smash through the metal gates surrounding parliament. They then climbed through windows after wrenching off metal bars. An opposition leader, Temur Gulia, told Reuters that their initial demand was to scrap the investment agreement, which critics feared would clear the way for wealthy Russian individuals and businesses to buy up property in the lush Black Sea region, pricing out locals. But now, he said, the protesters wanted to go further and oust the self-styled president. The people demand the resignation of Aslan Bazania and categorically intend to achieve it, said Gulia. Most of the world recognizes Abkhazia as part of Georgia from which it broke away during wars in the early 1990s. The opposition said in a statement that the protesters' actions were not against Russian-Abkhazian relations, but charged that Bazania has been trying to use these relations for his own selfish interests, manipulating them for the sake of strengthening his regime. Abkhazian society had only one demand, to protect the interests of our citizens and our business, it said. The loss of control over Abkhazia will weaken Russia's position in the South Caucasus. If the situation escalates, a second front against Russia could open here, after Ukraine. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky commented Friday on German Chancellor Scholz's phone call to Russian President Vladimir Putin. During his nightly video address, the Ukrainian leader described the phone conversation between Russian President Vladimir Putin and Scholz as a Pandora's box and warned that there will be no Minsk III. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz on Friday urged Russia to be willing to negotiate with Ukraine in his first call with President Putin in nearly two years. The Kremlin responded that Moscow was open to new talks and pointed to Putin's earlier proposal that Kiev should cede territory and back off its plans to join NATO. Government spokesman Stefan Hebestreit said Scholz condemned Russia's war of aggression against Ukraine during the call and called on Putin to end it by withdrawing troops that launched a full-scale invasion of the country in February 2022. That conflict reaches its 1,000-day mark next week. Канцлер Шольц казав мені, що збирається подзвонити Путін. Дзвінок Олафа, на мою думку, це скринька Пандори. Тепер можуть бути і інші розмови, інші дзвінки, просто багато слів. І це саме те, що Путін давно хоче. Йому вкрай важливо послабити його ізоляцію, ізоляцію Росії і вести перемовини як Звичайні перемовини, які не будуть нічим завершувати, так як він десятиліттями робив. Це давало можливість Росії нічого не змінювати в своїй політиці, нічого не робити по суті. І якраз це і призвело до цієї війни. Розуміємо всі ці виклики зараз, знаємо, як діяти. І хочемо попередити, Мінська-3 не буде. Нам потрібен реальний German Chancellor Olaf Scholz condemned the war in Ukraine in a phone call Friday with Russian President Vladimir Putin, the German government said, in the first such conversation in two years. Government spokesman Stefan Hebestreit said Scholz condemned Russia's war of aggression against Ukraine during the call, and called on Putin to end it by withdrawing troops that invaded the country in February 2022. 
The Chancellor urged Russia to be willing to negotiate with Ukraine with the aim of achieving a just and lasting peace and stressed Germany's unwavering determination to support Ukraine in its fight against Russian aggression for as long as necessary, Hebestreit said in a statement. Scholz had spoken beforehand with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, and would do so again after the call with Putin, the statement said. The German leader condemned Russian air raids on Ukrainian civilian infrastructure and warned that the deployment of North Korean troops to Russia to fight in the war against Ukraine would mark a serious escalation of the conflict. The United States, South Korea and Ukraine say North Korea has sent thousands of troops to Russia to support its war against Ukraine. The German government statement did not say how long the call with Putin lasted, but German news agency DPA said it was about one hour. The Russian government did not immediately have any comment about the call. The call comes as the conflict nears next Tuesday's 1,000-day mark since the February 24, 2022 invasion by Russian troops. The European Union must abandon its policy of sanctioning Russia for its war in Ukraine or risk causing an economic collapse, Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban told State Radio on Friday. The EU has imposed several rounds of sanctions against Moscow since Russian President Vladimir Putin launched the full-scale invasion of Ukraine in 2022, targeting the energy sector, banks, the world's biggest diamond mining company and other businesses. Orban, widely seen as having the warmest relations with the Kremlin in the EU, has broken with the majority of European leaders and vocally opposed such sanctions, arguing they did more to damage European economies than they did Russia's. The Hungarian leader on Friday said the EU's sanction regime should be reviewed, because with such a policy of sanctions, energy prices will not come down. It will be painful for those who argued for sanctions. Not for us, because we will see this as a victory, but the other camp has to change because otherwise it will destroy the European economy," he said. Hungary currently holds the six-month rotating presidency of the EU, and has de-emphasized retaliatory measures against Russia in that role. EU leaders, however, are making plans to impose a new round of penalties against Moscow. On Thursday, the European Parliament adopted a resolution demanding the EU step up against Russia's so-called shadow fleet, ships that export Russian oil in violation of sanctions. The legislature also wants the bloc to ban the import of Russian fossil fuels. Orban opposes such a ban, and has leveraged exceptions from the EU during previous rounds of sanctions that allowed landlocked Hungary to continue importing Russian oil and gas, which he argues are essential to sustaining Hungary's economy. The Hungarian leader last week predicted that President-elect Donald Trump would pull U.S. support for Ukraine in its war against Russia. A Trump presidency, Orban has argued, will revive Hungary's sputtering economy, now in a technical recession. The pro-peace presidential candidate won, and now we are waiting for peace, Orban said Friday. 